I don't understand why they always have to mow the grass or the ice cream man has to come when I'm making my videos. Ah. Hi everybody and welcome to my channel. I'm so happy to have you here. My name is Marissa. You're watching my channel Life After the Fontan. This is my very first video, so um, just a few things about me. Again, my name's Marissa. I'm 24. I'm from New Jersey. What else? I like to go to the beach. I'm a cardiac nurse. I have two cats and my favorite color is blue. Oh, and one other thing. I was born with six complex congenital heart defects. I've had three open heart surgeries and I have what's called a Fontan. Um, at three days old, I had my first surgery, eight months old, my second surgery, and 22 months old was my final surgery, the Fontan surgery. So if you haven't been able to guess, that's really what my channel is going to be based on. A congenital heart defect, for those that don't know, is a structural malformation that occurs to a baby's heart while they're still developing in the uterus. They're actually pretty common. They're, uh, they impact every one in 100 births. And it may not sound like a lot, but think about how many babies are born each day, born each week, born each year. So this channel will really be taking you through my life as a patient or a survivor, some may say, with congenital heart defects, otherwise known as CHD or also congenital heart disease. So you'll probably hear me use those three terms interchangeably. So let's get started. This video is not for me. This channel is not for me. It may be about me and about my experiences such as cardiac caps, echocardiograms, medications, anything that comes along with living with a Fontan or congenital heart defects. This channel is for you. This channel is for the 18 year old high school graduate who's having her first cardiac cath that she'll remember a month before moving into college. This channel is for the otherwise healthy teenager, young adult, grown adult, or younger child who is starting to have some cardiac symptoms. So they're going to have their first exercise stress test. This video is for the parents whose child with congenital heart disease, they're well versed in everything. However, they're putting a new halter monitor on for the first time and they're just looking for tips and tricks on how to do so. This video is for the expecting parents who up until their most recent doctor's appointment thought they were having a healthy baby boy or baby girl. And instead they learn that their child will be born with a single ventricle defect, eventually undergoing the dreaded Fontan. This video is to offer hope and to inspire others with congenital heart disease who may or may not be going through similar things as I am. It's not all going to be about medical procedures and stuff. I, I would love to feature my boyfriend, my parents, my friends in Q&A videos once you guys establish some questions that you'd like. I am really, really, really excited to get this started. So let's try it. Before I forget, please remember to like and subscribe. Turn on notifications if you would like to be notified when I post new videos. And please always feel free to comment down below any topic suggestions, any questions, any anything that I could do better with, please let me know. Or I'm really more than open to your ideas. So feel free to comment for me. So I first wanna start by talking about my defects specifically. I'll probably get more into them in a, in a later video, but this is just at least a basic understanding. I was born with six complex congenital heart defects, as I had mentioned, pulmonary atresia, a ventricular septal defect known as VSD, a congenitally corrected transposition of the great arteries with ventricular inversion, that would be CC-TGA, dextrocardia, and bilateral superior vena cavas. So to understand those a little better, let's first look at the anatomy of a regular heart. Now remember, I am a nurse. I'm an artist by no means. So let's take a look at this heart. I spent a long time creating this on my iPad, so I hope you guys can understand it. A typical heart works with two separate pumping systems, the pulmonary circulation and systemic circulation. 
We'll start with the superior and inferior vena cavas, which are on the left-hand side of the screen. They receive deoxygenated blood from the body. This blood is pumped into the right atrium, then through the tricuspid valve and into the right ventricle. The right ventricle pumps this blood through the pulmonary valve into the pulmonary artery, eventually bringing the blood to the lungs. In the lungs, the blood is oxygenated and returns to the heart via the pulmonary veins. The pulmonary veins deposit the blood into the left atrium. Blood travels through the mitral valve into the left ventricle, then through the aortic valve and out the aorta. From the aorta, oxygenated blood is delivered to your body, delivering oxygen to all of your cells. The circulation then begins again at the superior and inferior vena cavas when deoxygenated blood is returned to the heart. Great, so now that we've had a chance to look at the regular anatomy of a typical heart without any congenital heart defects, let's look at how my heart appeared when I was born, the three separate surgeries that I had with it, and how it's working now. So remember, I'm definitely no artist here. I'm not claiming to be one. Um, so here we have the same heart that we looked at in the last clip, although this one does not have any of the defects. Now you see, first I see the transposition of the great arteries, the ventricular septal defect, pulmonary atresia, bilateral superior vena cavas, ventricular inversion. You can kind of see that the muscles on the heart are a little flipped and then dextrocardia, so my heart's on the wrong side of my chest. Up at the top, that little yellow squiggly line, that's a BT shunt, so it's rerouting blood from my aorta to my pulmonary artery. That was the first surgery. Then this arrow that you see here is from my second surgery, the hemifontan, where we connect my superior vena cava to the pulmonary artery, and then the fontan completion. This isn't a perfect video, but the inferior vena cava is connected to the pulmonary artery. And again, I do just want to add, this was just a very, very brief overview of my defects and my surgeries. We'll definitely get more into this in a subsequent video, but I just wanted to introduce them here. So now that we've talked about the regular anatomy of a typical heart you may see and what my heart looks like, let's talk a little bit more about congenital heart disease. Congenital heart disease or congenital heart defects can impact, like I said, one in 100 births. That really adds up to be a lot. Most patients that are born with congenital heart defects will require some type of life-saving surgery pretty early on in their life. Some people may wait a few months, others may only have a few hours after being born. Lifelong obstacles can arise from congenital heart defects, and really the surgical palliations performed in childhood for that. For example, I have some side effects from my Fontan procedure that they couldn't have guessed I would develop 22 years ago when they first did the surgery. And we're looking into all of that now. Other things that you would think about would be lifelong medications, lifelong follow-up appointments. I see my cardiologist every four to six months. I have echocardiograms every, again, four to six months, EKGs every four to six months. I have exercise stress tests once a year, cardiac MRIs every five years, cardiac caths every 10 years, the list goes on. And that's only the cardiac related exams. For all of the other specialties I see, I also have lifelong monitoring for that too. And many of these specialties I see are directly related to my heart's physiology. But I make it work. That's, that's kind of what you do. I've known nothing more than living with congenital heart defects. This is my life. I absolutely love to serve as an advocate for congenital heart disease patients, parents, family members, anything. Growing up through middle school, high school, college, I did experience obstacles or other challenges that my peers did not due to my congenital heart defects. And it's something that I've just lived with. It's a bummer each time a new obstacle comes up, but it's not to be unexpected. You can work through it as long as you have a good support system. And I hope that I'm one of those people that can serve on your 
support system, whether you're a heart patient, you're a heart parent, family member, grandparent, neighbor, friend, significant other, husband, wife, anything. Also, if you're a heart healthy individual, not my favorite term, but that's what we call it. And you, like I mentioned earlier, you may be undergoing your first exercise stress test and you may be having your first echocardiogram. I can't even count on any of my fingers or toes how many echoes I've had in my life, how many stress tests I have. This is all normal for me, but it may not be for you. And I would love to share my life with you. Thank you all for joining me. Please remember to like and subscribe. Turn on your notifications if you'd like to hear when I have my next video posted. And please remember, feel free to comment. I would love to hear from you. I'd love to hear your questions, your comments, your video suggestions or topic suggestions, anything that you need me to talk about. Please let me know. Thank you guys and I'll see you all soon.